gonna do the field test for my iron lock striker markers. These are the tri-grip twin tip markers that have a chisel nib on one side and a bullet nib on the other. And if you're interested in reading the rest of this review, I recommend you check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com for a comprehensive look at these markers. But for now, we'll go over the basics. I ordered the 20 pack from Bombing Science. It's a, it's a like a graffiti website. It came in this envelope, 20 markers. Uh, one of the markers was dead. I managed to resuscitate it. I also ordered open stock, this blending marker for about $3. Um, and I had this marker come in my April art snacks. These markers have a color chip at the end to indicate color along with a color family name that tends not to be consistent and it doesn't make a lot of sense. To me personally, if you understand Iron Lock's color family system and can explain it, uh, ideally in reference to Prismacolor or Copic's color system, because those are the two I'm really familiar with, um, I would really appreciate it. The color chips are not all that indicative of the color inside the marker, so swatching is super necessary. If you are interested in these markers, please do swatch them. I thought I had ordered the brush tip because Stryker does make a brush tip, so I was a little surprised when the bullet nib came in, but you know what? I'll roll with it. I'll make it work. Um, if you have the brush tip marker, and you would be willing to donate it for the purposes of review, I can send it back to you after. I would love to do that. Leave a comment or email me and we'll make it work out. We could trade supplies or something. I don't know, because I don't feel like buying, I can't afford to buy the brush tip marker in addition to owning the bullet tip marker, but I would love to do a trade. So I have already prepped this really cute illustration of my main character. Kara from my comic, Seven Inch Kara. She tends to be like my de facto field test. I currently have a new tier on the Patreon that once we hit that goal, uh, backers will be able to purchase a tier where they can, they get to determine what the field test is and I send them the finished piece. So it's kind of kind of like a commission tier, kind of just a, we want to be able to decide the content here. So, um, oh, and Strikers come in multiple 20 piece sets. I think there's like four with different colors in it. I picked the set I thought would best serve my needs because it's a little annoying and expensive to get these markers open stock. It can be really hard. Um, Amazon has some, but they're very expensive, like $10 each, um, which is just a ludicrous price. And I'm not going to pay that price for alcohol markers when I already have a full collection of alcohol markers. So I am, I am shading Kara, the whites of Kara's eyes with B203, which is actually kind of a dark light blue. And I'm using the colorless blender to try and lighten that up. And I'm not having a lot of success. So I think I'm going to have to go in with the old, uh, opaque white to add some details back. And as you can see, it's already pushing through to the back of the paper. So I'm gonna to need to grab a piece of cardstock and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went and I grabbed some cardstock and now I'm going to try and get some shading in on these clover blossoms. And I'm not super sure which end to do it with because the bullet nib is just, you know, it's a bullet nib. It's not really pleasant to use. It's kind of streaky. Um, and it takes a lot longer to put down color. The chisel nib is a chisel nib. It's a little bit blocky. Um, it also can be difficult to con control. Um, so I will reiterate, if you have a set of the brush tip striker markers that you would will be willing to loan me or rent me, um, please let me know. Cause I would really like to give striker um, a fair shot. And I think getting the wrong marker doesn't help with that. And I find with these marker tests, I end up using the blender marker to get pastel tones um, a lot more than I ever usually rely on it because um, I sort of curated my personal collection of markers to to function the way I like to render. So anytime I get a pre put together set of markers, <laughs> it's, it's like starting from scratch, like learning all over again. 
Um, that's a good thing in a way because it definitely makes me sensitive to what many of you guys might be going through. And it was those sort of thoughts in, that I had in mind when I put together the set for the, my giveaway. And I picked this set because it had, um, well, the digital swatch seemed to have a lot of good skin tones in it. And honestly, the, the swatch, the printout swatch and the digital swatch on the website are just not really indicative of the colors inside. The colors inside are fine. Um, it might be helpful if Stryker, instead of giving their sets uh, numbers, I think this is like number five, I'd have to double check though. Um, instead of giving their sets numbers, if they maybe gave them seasonal names, just to sort of give a better idea. Um, something else that would be helpful is if sites like Iron, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, bombing science or the iron lock site itself, instead of work, uh, relying on digital swatches, which are often really inaccurate. If they would just do a physical swatch and try to get a really accurate scan of it on a computer that has a color calibrated monitor. But I feel this, this way about most sites that sell art supplies. Like that is something that would be really beneficial to your customers and I feel like sometimes these sort of sites rely on the inaccuracy of digital color as opposed to the analog um, to make more sales because like the digital color looks like one thing and the color you get is another and you feel like it's your your fault like you didn't properly select your colors so you end up just ordering more colors trying to get the color you were going after but I mean, you may mess up several times because you're working from digital swatches. And that's why I always try to include in my blog post photos of the swatches for the markers that I, I have. Um, and I think a lot of crafting bloggers try to do that too. Um, so I am really appreciative when I can find um, a, a comprehensive color family that someone else uploaded because that really helps me select my colors. Like even if their lighting isn't very good, it's still a lot better than the digital swatches. Um, so I'm gonna zoom in on this so you guys can see how difficult a time I'm having controlling my color. I'm using the colorless blender to try and push this blue back and make it a little softer. Um, and it just kind of spreads all over. And that's understandable, colorless blender is really just the solution that's used to suspend the dye in these markers. Um, you could use rubbing alcohol too, and honestly rubbing alcohol would perform just about as poorly as this is performing, because uh, rubbing alcohol tends to really push the dye out. I think some of these uh, blending solutions might have some glycerin in them to sort of limit how much the colorless blender pushes color aside. And I'll try to include, I have swatches. I'll try to make sure I, I include them in the blog post for you guys who are considering these markers. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, so that layer has dried. I'm gonna try and add some more light blue details. Again, with the B203. And if you're interested in these markers, these are Australian alcohol-based markers that were designed to appeal to graffiti artists, hence why I got a set on Bombing Science. It's a, a graffiti supplier. Um, so if you are a graffiti artist, these markers might look more appealing to you than they would to a uh, illustrator. Your needs might be very different. And um, I don't I do not do that sort of art at all. Um, so I don't have any experience with what your needs might be. So this review is not intended um, to be a definitive review to the target audience. Instead, it is a, def a review intended for bycatch audience, crafters and illustrators who might be interested in these markers. And um, for context, I live in the southeastern part of the United States, so I don't actually know what kind of art supplies Australian artists have access to. Um, I would assume, I'm pretty sure they have 
Copics, but I would assume they have um, a variety of like uh, European brands as well, and probably a better variety of Japanese brands and possibly better Korean brands. If you are an Australian artist and you'd like to clue me in, or you're interested in doing a supply trade, um, please let me know. I would love to do that. Sounds like fun to me. All right, so that is way too blue for Clover, at least in the US, but I'm gonna go over those with some opaque white in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling in our skin and I'm starting with Warm Gray 00, which would seem like an odd choice, but according to my swatches, it's one of the lightest skin tones. And for a warm gray, it's actually very yellow. Um, me. See, very yellow, warm gray. So that's what I mean when I say with Stryker, they have some really um, just weird color names. Cause like this would, to me, this would be like um, a YR. So a yellow red rather than a warm gray. If you give me a minute, I will go grab an example of a warm gray that is commonly seen in my studio. I'll be right back. I got that warm gray right here. This is Bo. Hello, Bo. He was sleeping under my table. So enough of that non sequitur. I will get back to rendering with this not quite what I would consider a warm gray. And I am rendering small sections and I'm coloring in kind of a circular pattern that increases your saturation and also makes um, streaking less noticeable and less likely to happen because of the increased circuit, uh, saturation. And this is great if all you have in your collection or if what you have in your collection is primarily bullet nibs because bullet nibs just don't saturate the paper the way uh, brush tips would. So they take a lot longer to color with. Picking up the cat, put cat hair everywhere. All right, so I'm gonna start coloring in some of these clovers. And I apologize for some of the shadows that are crisscrossing the let me see if I can actually remedy them. Okay, that should be a little bit better. Um, I'm trying an external mic rather than the mic on my camcorder. So that's the plug for that. And that should mean that first layer of warm gray is dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying some of the blush using R triple zero. And another complaint I kinda had with the striker set is some of the colors are so similar that there's no point in including them. Like the warm gray I just put down and this R triple zero are actually very similar um, on my swatches. I would rather they include something that's just drastically different and give us a little more variety than two colors that are um, almost visually identical. And in general, these markers handle very similarly to most uh, bullet nib markers. They're not really exceptional. The chisel nib is pretty similar to every other chisel nib on the market except for the Conda marker chisel nib and the Prismacolor chisel nib, which are both kind of exception <laughs> chisel nibs. They're really good chisel nibs. Um, in fact, for your quick reference, I have one such Prismacolor right here. This is their chisel nib. It's the Tri Chisel Nib. This has got kind of a triangular shape as compared to this chisel nib, which is pretty much just a boring hunk of, I guess it looks like compressed felt or fiber. 
So, um, not that Striker is trying to come onto the market and really compete with the existing champions. Um, I was the one who kind of introduced them into my studio. You know, it wasn't like I was told I needed these. Um, but if they are trying to compete with that illustration, with uh, existing illustration markers, um, they really need to consider offering something that just isn't isn't commonly found. And yeah, I do know they have a brush tip. I do not have the brush tip. Their brush tip might be phenomenal. I don't know because I don't have it. But from what I see here, their bullet nib is very standard, very meh. Their chisel nib is very standard, very meh. I'm going to darken up some of that pink with R301. And then I'm going to start adding shadows again with warm gray double zero. And when it's once it's layered, it does look a little bit more desaturated, but it's still not what one would think of as a warm gray. If you are very familiar with striker markers and you can explain uh, where this naming justification comes from, I would be interested in hearing it because I do enjoy understanding systems, especially as they pertain to art markers. To me, it is not necessarily um, so detrimental that I would just like not ever recommend the markers. However, I mean, systems exist for a reason. Why not just give your markers color names? Do these have color names? No. Okay, so all you've got to go by are these numbers that don't really mean anything and your swatches. And that is almost enough for me to recommend you skip striker markers, at least if you have access to other art markers and they don't cost you an arm and a leg. I mean, if you're paying hefty import fees, it may not be worth your time. And I don't actually know, so if you know, please let me know. But um, AliExpress has several pretty decent, inexpensive alcohol markers. I've reviewed a few of them on this channel. Um, they may, don't hold me to it, they may deliver to uh, places in Australia. So that might be an avenue worth considering if you do have difficulty getting a hold of good alcohol markers because you live in New Zealand or Australia. I don't know, I feel like that's like a weird question to send to the community channel. All right, so this warm gray using the bullet nib, nib to render definitely feels dry and scratchy and kind of unpleasant. It's more reminiscent of the sort of coloring that I would have done um, when I was like a little kid, which is one of the reasons I really don't care for bullet nib markers. And I'm gonna switch over to the marker I reconstituted the other day, uh, Y701T or 01T. Uh, really not understanding that designation um and i reconstituted it with rubbing alcohol and there should be a video coming up about how i did it um i used a combination of several techniques um i also soaked my nibs in rubbing alcohol for a really long time uh several hours uh to soften up the nibs but also to reclaim the ink that was in it in fact here is some of that ink so i have a feeling this color is a lot lighter than it would have been but the marker was just like totally dead on arrival i don't know if that's bombing science's fault i don't know if that's um striker's fault None of the other markers I received were dead.
So now that I have her skin filled in, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to applying shadow. And I'm going to use R903. And that is another color I don't really understand the naming for because it is, it's a sort of a light blue violet kind of color. Where does the R designation come from? In my experience, um, R's are usually used to refer to reds. Um, so again, if you do understand the striker naming system and you feel like explaining it to me, I would appreciate it. Or if you can link it to me, cause I did, I did miss it. Um, I think I looked for it on their site when I was doing the art snacks, um, unboxing stuff and I missed it. So if you have it, please send it. Maybe it will all become illuminated having a little bit of trouble with blending. I'm also trying to be kind of um, ginger in terms of where I apply this shadow because it's often really hard to blend shadow um, out with bullet nib markers. And I'm having to reference my color chart pretty much every time I switch colors. Some of the bullet nibs are a lot scratchier than others. And I'm sure over time they'll kind of soften up because that's my experience with bullet nibs. Is you have to kind of be beat them up a little bit, uh, mush them in a little, and they, they sort of get easier to use with time. Still definitely not my preferred tip choice. Um, if you are interested in alcohol markers and you've never, you haven't used any of them, you haven't uh, ever purchased any, I recommend you go to Michael's because they have their Copics out, sort of out in the open, in the front, um, right by the checkout, and uh, <laughs> just sort of ignore any dirty looks you might get from people for just like standing there messing around with Copics, and just go take a look at the markers they have. Um, I wish they had other brands open like that, like Prisma Colors and stuff too, but that would, their selection of Copic colors is really small. And I'm not recommending you buy your colors, your markers from Michaels. I'm just <laughs> recommending you go to Michaels if you've never really messed around with alcohol markers at all and just take a look at what they have out. Um, and if you have a dedicated art supply store in your town, they should have their like, um, our Jerry's, for example, doesn't have the Copics out. Those are behind glass, but they do have um, chart pack markers out and they have um, both types of Prismacolor, the bullet nib and chisel nib type and the chisel nib, I mean, bullet nib and brush nib type out. Um, so as long as you're not like, you know, seeking to destroy their stock, they don't really mind you playing around with them and getting a look at the markers and figuring out um, which ones work for you, which one, which colors work for you. All right, now I'm gonna try and render a larger field of color, that being the grass. And just sort of try out different markers before you commit to um, purchasing a bunch. If you have friends with those markers, bribe them into letting you play with them. Some of them would understandably not be cool with, you know, letting you play with their markers. So bring them coffee or, I don't know, soda, whatever your friends are into. Make a big deal about how nice they are for letting you use their precious expensive art toys. Because the more uh, you play around with them before you buy them, the more, the better you're going to be when you do have them. Okay, I'm trying to use the 
the chisel nib now to get this grass done because it would take forever. And the chisel nib puts down so much more ink than the bullet nib, which is kind of a duh. Like, of course it does, but it also puts down like a, a higher saturation of ink. So it's going to take some work back and forth to get this grass to look the way I want it to because I'm alternating between this bullet nib, which isn't very good. I mean, isn't good at covering large areas. And this chisel nib, which is scratchy and uh, doesn't put down uniform coverage, but really saturates the paper. All right, so it took some doing, but I got that grass in the background filled out using a combination of the bullet nib and the chisel nib, and neither nib are able to like finally delineate. Let me zoom in so you guys can see, but see how blobby this is? That was drawn with the bullet nib. And that's why when art supply manufacturers claim the reason they're including a bullet nib is for fine details, I'm just like, no, no, clearly you don't use your own supplies because the bullet nib is garbage. Sorry, I passionately hate bullet nibs. It's gonna be on my tombstone. Hated bullet nibs. Poss possibly, it could be. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my second layer with the same shade of green and sort of draw in additional blades of grass here and there just to, you know, kind of push the cartoony illusion of grass. Now, if you are buying these markers for like quick concept sketches, um, they might be really good for that because the bullet nib definitely lends itself to sort of a sketchy, quick approach. Um, however, there are other markers on the market which are better suited towards that and cost less. Um, and if you are looking for suggestions for that, I think my video, AliExpress Markers, which is uh, either in the annotations right here or on a card right here, can help you out with a few of my recommendations for that. If you're in the US and you're looking for sort of an inexpensive marker for sketching kind of purposes, um, Jerry's Artorama makes the concept brand or has the license for, you know, whatever, for the concept brand of markers. And those also have a bullet nib. And I reviewed those a while back on the blog and I really, I didn't care for them, but they're very inexpensive. So if you're only picking up like a handful of markers so you can quickly add some color to some concept sketches or to some architectural sketches or something that doesn't necessarily require um like you know careful blending careful shading stuff like that um those might be a good choice for you especially if you have um a jerry's local to your area and that's the kind of marker you're looking for um there are plenty of amazing artists who use bullet nib markers all the time. So I am by no means saying that bullet nib markers aren't for anyone. I'm saying to me, they're the scourge of the devil and I hate them. And uh, I wish I hadn't goofed because I was really interested in the striker brush tip markers. This particular green isn't really um, layer and color as much as I would like. Um, I was hoping there would be like a tonal difference between the two layers and there is a slight tonal difference but it's actually very difficult to see in person and it's pretty much impossible to see on video so it probably looks to you guys like I'm just wasting my time. Um, so I will switch colors to a blue green to add in some shading on the grass and hopefully that will work a bit better. Right, so we are pretty much just left with possibly doing freckles, which I don't think 
I don't think I'm going to be able to pull off because both of those browns are pretty dark. And coloring in her dress. And unfortunately, when I use um, bullet tip markers and I have like a limited color selection, I don't necessarily want to do <laughs> large expanses because it's annoying to do. And those freckles are dark and very circular because they came from a bullet nib. I can uh, sort of elongate some of them so they'll look a little more uh, like freckles, but you're not, with a bullet nib, you're not actually going to be able to get as fine details as you would with a brush nib. So if you're thinking about markers, please, 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 please learn from my annoyance and at least give um, brush tips a shot. Make them your first choice in terms of alcohol markers. And if you don't like them, well, I apologize. I will issue you an apology. I'm sorry if you don't if you don't like them at all. If there's no redeeming traits in brush tips. They do tend to be more expensive, which is why a lot of artists will go um, for the bullet nibs and then it's like, eh, well, I don't really like alcohol markers. Well, you know, maybe it's what you're using. So I think for her dress, because we are um, nearing finished, I might go with, I just really don't like my color selection for this because I have like this really hot pink. I guess I can do this pink here, R301. And I'm just sort of trying to roughly fill it in because I do know I will probably have to go on top of this with other layers. All right, and then after I apply this layer, I'm going to let it dry for a little while and hopefully I can get some built up saturation. All right, let's get this thing finished. So that sky feels pretty empty. Um, so I think I'm gonna pull out my trusty frisket and try doing a wash with these, a type of wash with these markers. All right, so I've got some frisket on my paper and it's not covering the entire um, carrot image. There's like a gap in there, unfortunately. Um, but it is covering most of it. And since this is really just a field test and not a finished piece of art, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Oh, that's where it skipped. And this is some rubbing alcohol in a spritzer bottle. That should make the sky blend a little bit better and I need to let that absorb and I'll come back. All right and since that layer has dried I'm gonna go over it now with B028 which is a dark blue. Oh darker than I thought. What I'm trying to do is sort of a stratospheric blue effect that you guys have seen me demonstrate in other videos um, might not be possible with the colors I have. Grab yield rubbing alcohol again. There it is. It's like, where'd that marker go?
Now, I didn't clean off all of the permanent marker from the part where I did the grass. So that's where that blue is coming from, that sort of weird darker blue down there. And that was definitely my mistake. I should have cleaned that off. I usually do, I got distracted. Um, so I want, there's an area on her stomach that isn't covered by masking frisket. And I'm gonna try to be, actually I don't even need to do that, hang on. I can just take a fresh piece and pretty much cut it to size. But while I fiddle around with this masking frisket that now I got it going, I can talk to you guys about my thoughts regarding these markers. I found that for an illustrator, the color disparity within a 20 piece marker set makes it really hard for me to use this set. Um, there's just too many gaps. And the, the bullet nib is just unpleasant to use, but I, I don't like any bullet nibs pretty much, so that's not really a surprise there. And the chisel nib um, is also difficult to control because it doesn't have the ability to render with a whole lot of nuance. Um, I don't really care for this set. Um, and I also found the easel. It comes in doesn't really want to stand up because it's just sort of like floppy. So while I appreciate that these markers came in a carrying case, um, it's not the sort of carrying case I would normally grab for. So are striker markers for you? Um, if you live in an area where you can get these and they're less expensive than other alcohol markers, they may be worth your money, especially if you're starting a collection. Um, but if you, like me, have to order them and they are more expensive because they're being brought in from another country, they are possibly not worth your time and money. There are other brands on the market. There are other cheap brands at, at lower price points in the U.S., um, which may be better worth your time. If you are, are strongly considering these markers, I have some alternatives to recommend that I prefer for both price and functionality. Um, if you haven't checked out Dick Blick's Blick Studio brush markers, I really suggest you give those a shot. Um, they are pretty comparable to Copic markers, although they're not refillable and the striker markers are refillable, but they're like uh, I want to say I've gotten them on sale before at $2.99 a marker, and I can grab one for you. Um, there, the blender marker. $2.99 a marker, not refillable, come in a fairly wide range of colors, have a brush tip and a chisel tip. Um, and I have a bunch of these and I really like them. Um, so if you're looking to start your marker collection, I recommend starting here. So, I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys found this tutorial, um, <laughs> this review useful, interesting, helpful. I hope I gave you something to think about in terms of iron lock striker markers. Um, if you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel because I do these sort of video reviews often. Um, if you want to help make more content like this possible, please consider funding my Patreon. These sort of posts get really expensive and your financial support would be really helpful. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. Bye.